regreso aquí en Auto 060 y vamos a tocar ahora un tema que siempre tiene muchos eh, puntos de vista, muchos factores, muchas opiniones y es el, eh, el eterno dile, eh, debate, dilema sobre lo que prefieren los hombres y las mujeres ahora enfocado al tema de comprar autos eh, y Kelly Blue Book, eh, el sitio de internet, eh, uno de los sitios de internet más importantes de información de autos nuevos y usados, eh, desarrolló un estudio en el cual entrevistó a 13.000 adultos acá en Estados Unidos, hombres y mujeres por igual, en el cual eh, se les pidió eh, su opinión sobre lo que considerarían a la hora de comprar eh, un vehículo nuevo entre los fabricantes americanos y los europeos en la división de lujo. Eh, y entonces se ha descubierto eh, que, bueno, más que se los diga yo, aquí vamos a escuchar la entrevista con nuestra amiga y colega, Diana Duque Miranda, Senior Manager for Kelly Blue Book Market Intelligence. Again, we're talking with our friend and colleague Diana Duque Miranda from Kelly Blue Book. How are you, Diana? I'm well. How are you, Javier? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, doing a little West Coast tour. I'm in California right now, and uh, I've been here uh, testing some, um, actually, European cars. And European cars uh, are the topic, of part of the topic of one of your recent uh, studies at Kelly Blue Book, right, about how men and women differentiate about when they talk about luxury brands. And some of the results are surprising to me, to be honest with you. Yeah, it is quite surprising. And there are some marked differences between what women and men prefer when they're shopping for a new vehicle. Yeah, and so um, they said in, in the male uh, shoppers, Lincoln came up number one. That's surprising to me regardless of, uh, of gender, to be honest with you. I didn't expect to see Lincoln at number one uh, at any list because, to be honest with you, I mean, they're having some problems with their cars right now. No, absolutely. And, Javier, what you have to remember is uh, the list that we came out with um, really highlight the differences where there are the major differences between what men and women prefer. It's not actually a list of, the top, say, the top ten among men or women. It's where there are the, the most Uh, differences between what women and men prefer. So Lincoln came out on top for men because men prefer the Lincoln brand 174% more than women do. Oh, okay. So it's not talking specifically about a car or something, uh, a particular model, just talking about the brand itself. Exactly. And the reason we think that is, you know, probably very accurate is that older men that are, you know, shopping around at kbb.com for a new vehicle, they place value in brands with a rich heritage, the brands that they grew up with, and they also very much value domestic brands. They have a strong connection with domestic brands. Yeah. And so that's why you see Lincoln and Cadillac, Chrysler, and Buick show up there. Okay, that makes perfect sense now. Like now that like the expert explains it, I get it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and... um. The other thing is, so Audi came out at second place, and then Jaguar, Scion, which is kind of surprising because it's a different mix. I mean, it's like a luxury brand, and then Scion, which is like a more uh, youthful Absolutely. brand from Toyota. Absolutely. Uh, I, can't, I can't explain that one at all. <laughs> But the Audi and the Jaguars, that speaks to the fact that men place a lot of value in design and power. Yeah, Exactly. And then uh, we see also Smart, which is also kind of uh, out of the, of the field there. But, I mean, uh, I guess it's a, it's a convenient car. Maybe people like it for that. I, I don't know. What, what do you think about that one? Yeah, I mean, I think it's another one of those cars that's, you know, a very popular brand these days in urban areas where people just need a small type of vehicle to get around, able to park it easily in the big cities and that sort of thing. Smart, you know, it's it's got its following. Yeah, some people think that it's not that good because of the transmission, that uh, manual automatic uh, transmission, but I think in the second generation is much better than the first one, so... Maybe that's why they are they're showing up in this list. And then to go into the female uh, new car shoppers, Volvo in number for number one place. And I remember Volvo a few years ago designed a car specifically for women. Woman, it's a it was a prototype. It never came to production, but uh, I guess they have uh, good points with with that and other features. And safety comes to mind. Exactly. I mean, the other thing that we analyzed in our um, study here is that. Um, what are the factors of importance for men and women and what are the differences? And safety always comes out on top when it comes to women rather than men. Yeah, and uh, Volvo is also very, very known for that for a long time. And Infinity came in second place, 
I guess uh, maybe that has to do a little bit with the new uh, F uh, X uh, new model that has tons of safety features like the rear camera thing and all that, right? Yeah, exactly. And when I think back to other work that we've done, we look at what features women are interested in in cars, and they do look at those features, the Bluetooth, the rear view cameras, the parking assist cameras. And so a vehicle that's more loaded with those features is going to be more appealing to females. Yeah. And um, probably, I mean, I was looking at both lists now together, Audi, Jaguar, uh, Mercedes-Benz come up on the first one. I, I'm surprised a little bit in the male one that Porsche is not there or Ferrari. I don't know. What, what's your, your, your take on that? Yeah, that is interesting. Um, I do find that men, um, by, by and large, look for design and power. And it is interesting. I think that the brands that don't show up on either of these lists, all it means is that men and women are interested in them equally. And so there oh, are I no see. differences. Okay. Yeah. yeah, everybody loves a Porsche and a Ferrari. That's what you say. I was going to say they don't. <laughs> exactly. That's very, 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 makes a lot of sense. That. Um, so an, another thing is that um, Acura, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Honda, Dodge, Kia, and Mazda for the, for the women buying cars. Um, any particulars on models or is it just like, again, only on brands? Um, I can give you information about models based on other work that we've done. And the other interesting thing that I've seen among women is that they're very much attracted to crossover vehicles. That's the segment that they shop the most. And the vehicles that come out on top for women are the CRV from Honda and the Mazda um, CX-5. Um, so those are very popular among women. So a lot of utility people uh, are looking for, I guess. Exactly. The other interesting thing is women are also looking for a vehicle that's going to satisfy their family needs. So they need more uh, seating capacity, more space, more trunk space, whereas men are basically focused on the design and the power of the vehicle. <laughs> exactly. And uh, it's very interesting uh, study also because I understand that women make most of the decisions when it comes to buying cars, right? I, I would certainly agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and in a separate issue that I saw recently, a separate, completely separate uh, study, from, not from Calibre Book, that uh, actually uh, while, while looking at the brands makes a lot of sense because I, I believe men are more inclined to do leases. Um, no, women are more inclined to do leases than men. And uh, so if you see the brands, uh, so the Europeans, um, the BMW and all those things are, are more leases than buys, right? That's interesting. So the study says women are more likely to, to do leasing? Apparently, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and the difference is not that big, to be honest. It's yeah. like 48, 52 or something like that. But I guess there's a study for anything, right? <laughs> In the yeah, no, true. But it sort of drives with um, stuff that I have heard from other studies that says women are also very, very much into value, getting value for their money, getting more bank for their buck. And the idea of, of getting a vehicle that, you know, doesn't depreciate as quickly um, when you drive it off the lot, if bought brand new, you know, they'd rather lease, you know, it makes more of a, a better value proposition for women. Yeah. Another point for the woman, because I mean, I have five sisters, so I didn't win many oh. arguments. So, <laughs> But it's true. I mean, here's the data backing up all these things. Like, women are better drivers, despite what men said. Uh, they're safer and like, uh, obviously more intelligent when it comes to buying cars, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we do a lot, a lot more research and, um, you know, fact finding before making a major decision, mm -hmm. whereas men tend to go with their gut, their gut yeah, feeling. Yeah, more emotional thing. Uh, Diana Duque Miranda from Kelly Blue Book, thank you very much again for your time and very interesting information. So um, for more information, uh, Kelly Blue Book, kbb.com, right? Yeah, perfect. Visit us at kbb.com and, you know, there's lots of interesting data there um, on all of these topics. Excellent. Thank you very much, Diana, and talk to you soon. All righty. Thank you, Javier. Bye-bye. Pues gracias otra vez ahí a Diana Duque Miranda de Kelly Blue Book. Y en otro estudio separado eh, que salió recientemente en estos días, eh, la satisfacción de los consumidores con las marcas en general. Y les voy a dar rápidamente el top ten list antes de que se nos acabe el tiempo en este segmento. El número uno, Mercedes Benz, eh, que subió 4% eh, y superó a Lexus, a Toyota, Subaru, 
y después Honda, Cadillac, GMC, Volkswagen, Acura y Ford. Este es un estudio en que los uh, fabricantes de lujo japoneses eh, se dieron el paso ahora a la Mercedes-Benz que subió, como decíamos, 4%. Eh, y realmente es una, un ejemplo de lo que está sucediendo con la industria. Realmente la competencia es, es feroz en, en todos los eh, segmentos y el de lujo no puede ser eh, una excepción. Eh, después del, del top 10 en que lo redondea la Ford Motor Company, sigue la Nissan. Eh, Chrysler sigue avanzando. Eh, subió 6% en el, uh, en el ranking de satisfacción entre los clientes. Después le sigue Buick, otra división de la General Motors. BMW. Y después Hyundai y Kia, eh, ya no es sorpresa, pero siguen siendo buenas no, noticias para los fabricantes coreanos el hecho de que estén ya siempre en prácticamente todos los estudios de calidad, de satisfacción, de rendimiento, eh, de seguridad. Estas dos marcas coreanas realmente avanzando y compitiendo de tú a tú con los grandes, grandes eh, clásicos, digamos, de la industria automotriz. Eh, le sigue después eh, Mazda, que también tampoco es, digamos, que una sorpresa porque... Eh, realmente es una compañía con mucha tradición, de mucha calidad, mucha tecnología. Y bueno, ahí está, lo, lo colocamos también en facebook.com slash auto 060. Y cuando regresemos vamos a hablar de un proyecto muy interesante de la compañía aseguradora State Farm que tiene un Camaro de 1968 muy particular. No se vayan, esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota. <música> 